So the way that we function, the way that we operate, yeah, is we operate in gears, okay? Gears, just like in your car. Our car has three gears and neutral, okay? Now, when you walked in here, you was chilling, you went between neutral and first gear. You was relaxed, it's a relaxed state. You think of gears, why do we change gears in a car? Go faster. It's the speed factor, isn't it? Right? You've got first gear will exist within a certain speed range, second gear in a certain speed range, and so on and so forth. If you don't, you're gonna mess up the gear box and you clutch. <laughs> anyway, how we operate is in neutral, you're chilling, you can even be asleep in neutral. Your heart rate will be between 60 and 90 beats per minute. Okay? Between 60 and 90 beats per minute, you're cool, you're calm, you're relaxed. Every every amount of uh, brain function is there. Right? Now you hear something a bit loud over there, whoop! You're gonna go into first gear. Now again, going from first to second gear happens very quickly in a car, doesn't it? Yeah. So first gear we be sit between 100 and, uh, sorry, uh, so 90 to 100 and feet per minute. So between then, in them parameters there, this is where you're now getting switched on that I'm warming up, you know, I'm warm, I'm warm, what's going on here? This is your assessing stage, assessing phase and speed of BPM. What you do above and beyond that now, we go into second gear. Second gear exists between 110 BPM and 140 BPM. If you do sport, whether it's a combat sport or any other kind of sport, if you uh, do a job, anything like that, you will tend to find that your heart rate will exist in second gear, between 110 and 140 beats per minute. In that frame, in that frame, this is where, as I say, the sports and all that aspect comes in. Boxers, MMA fighters, so on and so forth, this is how they operate. This is what they're operating in second gear. In second gear, you can stick to some rules. You can have a game plan, a strategy, yeah? You can, um, you can stay reasonably in control of your breathing, and so on and so forth. Now, what happened between Mike Tyson and Lennox Lewis in the press conference? Not in the ring, in a press conference. What happened now? Did any boxing come out? No. Did any anything that looked trained, that these are two of the greatest heavyweights in our generation, did any of it look trained that come out? No. That was human combative blueprint. Why? He went into third gear, both of them. They went into third gear. Why? They went into third gear because they wasn't in a designated place where they exist in second gear. They wasn't in a boxing ring. They weren't even in the boxing arena. They weren't wearing their usual attire. They didn't come out to music. They didn't have to prep in a, in a, in a changing room beforehand. Does that make sense? Everything happened very rapidly and very suddenly. So when it would have been standing there chilling, first gear goes to second gear, goes gone, goes to third gear. This is what you've been learning today, a bit of third gear. All of the other cognitive ability of fine motor skill sets only exist in second and lower. In third gear, you only have gross motor function and animalistic primal uh, DNA embedded mechanisms. That's all you have. So we have to get you good at that shit before you can be good at anything else. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Now, let's talk about another one. Two other very awesome heavyweight champions of the UFC, light heavyweight champions of the UFC, Daniel Cormier and John Barnes Jones. Again, not the fight in the cage. That's their comfort zone that cage, isn't it? The press conference hall. These guys are highly skilled athletes. Did you see any boxing come out? No. Did you see any Muay Thai come out? No. Did you see any wrestling come out? No. Did you see any Brazilian Jiu Jitsu come out? No. These guys are well versed in all four. What did you see come out? Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is what we do at, at my academy. How we operate is we get you good at this stuff first. Third gear. Now I know you'll survive it. When you're good at that, I know you'll survive it. Make sense? Yeah, because this stuff works. And this is prime. This is in you. After that, we build upon it with second gear skills. Yeah? But it's all based on up here. So let's have another talk real quick and then we're going to get back to hitting some fans, we're doing some stuff. But let's get back onto uh, 
a little something and take this away. This is something for you to intake and then take away and put it into, put it into how you look at things. I'll tell you what, I'm going to stand that side if you look, look, look this way because there's a lot of banging over there. It's distracting. Let's come over here. <laughs> What is the worst part of, 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 a, of a violent encounter? Who's had a violent encounter? I know you have. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. What is the worst part of a violent encounter? It's uh, about not knowing what, what to do within the first two, two seconds. What do I do? Massive. 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 Yeah. Okay. Do you know what the definition of fear is? No? That's one word that I really paid attention to in school before they kicked me out. The definition of fear is the feeling of the unknown. Yeah. That's what the definition of fear is. It's not like uh, all of the other like romantic ways that we can think about things. It's the feeling of the unknown. What is a feeling? It's an emotion. So something that we provide is CAT, Chemical Awareness Training. We tell you about the real breakdown of what happens inside, inside to your, uh, your body, physically, psychologically, how to control it and how to deal with it, right? Chemical Awareness, tra uh, awareness Training, CAT. You received a little portion of it already today when I spoke to you about the gears and whatnot, right? But the bottom line is, the thing that, that bothers you the most is you don't know how this is going to turn out. That's the thing that bothers you the most. That's the thing that plays on your mind. It's the bit that stalls your engine. Yeah? Makes sense. Fuck the stalling. Rev it up. Let's go turbo mode. Because it's the only... It gives you the best chance of surviving the situation you're going to deal with. I'm here as a survivor. I'll tell you that. At the end of that, at the end of this, I'm going to show you a video on my phone as well. Yeah? I'll show you quite a few things, but you're going to get the gist of what I'm coming, I'm coming to you with. Right? I dare say, I don't think, excluding, I don't think people here have the kind of level of uh, violence experience that I have in my life. As a former gang member, been there as a doorman, I've been there just being on road as we say there's no such terminology as the street in London for the past 10 15 years it's road right that's where I'm from recognize the accent this is what time it is yes okay now you know that bit that we were talking about where you don't know what the outcome's gonna be and you're a bit bothered because the guy kind of looks a bit scary yeah, or, or the group of us kind of look a bit scary, or the women kind of look a bit scary. Cause, why? Because they're going to crime. They're making themselves look bigger and louder. They're barking. You can see their teeth. That's a big factor. Yeah? You can see their teeth. You can see their eyes bulging out of their head. You can see their posture getting bigger. They get louder and they're coming into your space. And I've got control anywhere from the elbow up to the shoulder on the far side. Why? On the first instance, we're looking like this. So here, yeah? If he goes hit with his left hand, jam him. So all you gotta do is drop your weight into it. If he goes to hit with the right hand, jam him, drop your weight into it. If he goes to hit you with the head, drop your shoulder forward. If he goes to keep me or knee me, turn your leg out. Each and every one of these angles is covered. We're gonna talk about the other aspect later on. Something that has nothing to do with our day to day life and our cognitive thinking and ability. How we think we're intelligent as human beings without survival mode, being on point, you ain't intelligent and you can't back what you fucking do. You'll lose it all in like that. <laughs> Does this make sense? Making sense to you, innit? Right? Trust me when I tell you from experience where you have the guy who looks like that. And he's really pumping up and he's getting himself all large and he's not getting that feeling, the feeling of the unknown. It's at that point, see that, that image. Go oh, lovely, look at all them targets. Look how open he is. Look at that neck, look at that throat, I'm gonna have that. Look at that cheek, I'm gonna have my teeth right around that. Look at that ear, I'm gonna have my teeth right around that. Oh, my thumbs are gonna feel so good in them eyeballs. Yeah? 
the, the way that his brain is going to shake. I bet his head shakes to the right or to the left when I hit him. Yeah. The way his, his leg's going to bump out, I bet he almost head butts the floor when I do that knee bump. Trust me when I tell you, when you go in there, you only got to weather the, weather the initial storm. When they're like, I ain't fucking coming in, you can't. When they're giving it all of that business. Come on, you couldn't yet. Mm. <laughs> whatever, whatever part of London, uh, and it's like, right? oh, wherever it is, trust me, whether that initial storm, go in there, and you've got a 90% chance. Now, as I said earlier, nothing is 100, but we give you 90%. And that is fucking better than 50 50, isn't it? If you stand there and do nothing, what's gonna happen? You're gonna get bored. They're the predators, you're the prey. Yeah. Common sense. Simple as that, right? But if you step up and you take responsibility for your life at that moment in time, this is the reason I'm alive. Please take that on board. And next time you get into a situation like that, go 90% better than 50. Let's have it come on, it can't. Yeah? Bring it on, call it on, do it. Now, on a physical level, I said to you that in second year you can have a strategy, right? You know, you stick to your game plan in the cage, in the ring, on the mats, whatever. You're going to stick to your game plan. Well, what you don't realise is I've given you a game plan in third year. It's known as the Human Combat Blueprint. So you've got a beginning, you've got a middle, and you've got an end. Yeah? So in the beginning, what do we use? We use the first thing. From the first thing that's given us a 90% chance of, 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 of being able to be first. Once we've got that ability, we know that we can shut down the five probable outcomes that they can do. The four unarmed and the one armed. Once you know that you can shut that down, what's the fucking worst that happen? What's the worst? And once you start... From here now, smack out the back of his neck, he goes unconscious. What's happened now? From here, straight away. Hit him. Control him. Hit him. Hit him. Hit him. Now we're going from the beginning to the middle and then on to the end. Reach for a weapon. I'm now in control. Pull this arm out. Pull this arm out. As you can see, he's putting up a struggle, but he can't get the arm free. Sorry about that. Now I won't stand here and tell him to pull the arm out in reality. In reality, reach. <laughs> They're not reaching for nothing. You will know because you'll feel both their arms. Controls their limbs by the elbow and anywhere above here on the opposite side. C sets you up for your strikes. D stops every way that they can hit you. And finally, my biggest priority if they reach for a weapon, you can go straight into action. There was multiples, same rule applies. Uh, if you can't get this, it's because of different factors. Put your guard straight up. <laughs> we go into everything else that I've already shown. Just back up. When you can't go in, Go out.